international news. The president of Ecuador has declared war on the country's drug cartels after shocking video emerged this week depicting armed gunmen storming a live TV network broadcast and holding the anchors and crew hostage. According to the Associated Press, no one was killed in the incident and 13 people are facing arrest. Schools and stores in the country are now closed as residents hunker down amidst the government's declaration of internal armed conflict. President Daniel Noboa also designated 20 drug gangs as terrorist groups, giving the Ecuadorian military authorization to neutralize them within the bounds of international humanitarian law. The sudden spike in violence is thought to be tied to the prison escape of the leader of one of Ecuador's most powerful drug gangs. Since then, Ecuador has seen police officers kidnapped and at least 125 corrections personnel taken hostage inside prisons. Joining us now to dive into what exactly is going on in Ecuador is senior fellow at the Heritage Foundation, Mike Gonzalez. Welcome, Mike. Welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, can you help us understand how we got here? Uh, what is uh, the background of this prison break that seems to have precipitated all of this? Well, the, uh, the transnational uh, crime organizations have been taking over Ecuador for some time now. Let's not forget that last August they assassinated the leading presidential candidate, Fernando Villavicencio, uh, which is what led to, to Daniel Noboa's uh, victory in elections uh, last year. He's a new president. Uh, it's not clear to me uh, what kind of president he is. He's, he's sidelined his vice president, whom I met and who was very good, but he has not been able to control the, the transnational organizations, uh, one of which, the Choneros, which is the one that took over the TV station, is apparently controlled by the Sinaloa cartel in Mexico. But it's a confluence of all bad actors, uh, Ecuador, unfortunately. Um, uh, it's got uh, it's it, it's got Albanian mafias. It's got China. It's got uh, uh, Iran involved in there. It's got Hezbollah. It's got it's it's a it's a, a, a nexus between the Marxist left, the drug cartels, and, and and China, but a lot of other bad actors that are unfortunately just joining forces in Ecuador. Hmm. Um, what is going on in the streets now? Um, are, is, we just read reports of people um, staying home, schools closing, all that sort of thing. Is there a sense that the, the kind of law and order in the country is itself coming apart at this moment? Yes, I, I, I'm afraid that it very much is. Uh, let's not forget that this happened at a, at a well, it was a televised uh, event, uh, a, but it also happened at universities. It's happening in the prison system. There are apparently explosions across the country. Um, we can only, and, 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 and he, in, in, in uh, Noboa, President Noboa, is claiming that the, uh, the, the, the transnational groups are using weapons that they have grabbed from the Peruvian uh, uh, military. Peru is uh, just south of Ecuador. Ecuador is a Pacific country wedged between Colombia and, and Peru. Um, uh, Dina uh, Boluarte, the president of Peru, which is also a troubled country, has uh, has pledged support for Noboa, uh, but it's a uh, it's a very it's a it's a crisis time for that poor country. What are U.S. relations like with Ecuador uh, at this moment? Well, as we said, as a new president, uh, Noboa, he hasn't been there for a very long time. I think the Biden administration has pledged support. The Biden administration's policies towards Latin America have not really helped. They have, for example, we have befriended um, uh, Gustavo Petro, the president of Colombia, just north of Ecuador, who himself is a former terrorist at, uh, for M-19, a terrorist group that is Marxist and is associated also with the drug cartels. He is, uh, uh, Petro in, in Colombia has stopped a lot of the, the, the fighting against the drug cartels that, that his predecessors have pursued. Um, we, ha we no longer have an air base a, uh, in, in Ecuador. 
The previous president, uh, Rafael Correa, uh, did not sign the lease in 2019. In fact, the Choneros gang that took over the TV station come from Manta, which is the area where we have an air base. We used to have an air base. Uh, so we had an, a, a, an air base that was used for drug interdiction. Now it's being used to, to, uh, to, to, to facilitate the shipment of drugs from the port of Guayaquil to Antwerp in Europe and here to the U.S. Again, it's a, 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 I'm afraid the, the White House and the State Department are not helping here, uh, but I, I don't see how even they could. It's, it's a, just a bad situation. When you say they're not helping, what would you like to see them doing an, an alternative to address the uh, capitalist drug cartels who've taken over the country? Well, we could stop befriending these regimes like in Colombia or, 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 or uh, in Brazil with Lula da Silva, who are, you know, Lula da Silva, the president of Brazil himself, uh, was in prison until last year uh, for corruption. But we have embraced them. We have embraced Petro. We have embraced uh, Boric in Chile. Uh, we, we, shouldn't, we, we should try to befriend American-friendly regimes like Millet. Instead, we've given him the Heisman, um, uh, like we gave uh, Jamate in, Gu in Guatemala, another pro-American president. Uh, uh, Noboa, again, it's hard to, to say where he is right now. You hear uh, different things. But our policy towards Latin America has not, uh, have, we have embraced bad guys and given people who, like Millet, we, we, Biden took like five days to call Millet and congratulate him uh, after he won resoundingly uh, uh, the presidential election. It took him 45 minutes to, to congratulate Lula da Silva in Brazil, even though it was a really very close call there. You know, many of our viewers might be surprised to hear you endorse uh, the imprisonment of Lula. Of course, he was the leading presidential candidate before his opponent uh, trumped up corruption charges against him and had him imprisoned. Uh, as we look at uh, what's going on here in the United States of America, where many people feel like the politicized attack on Donald Trump is an undermining of our de democratic systems, do you believe that that was an appropriate way to uh, oust your political opponent? to take uh, pretextual corruption charges and literally imprison him? Well, I agree with the latter part of what you said. I disagree with the first part. I don't, I mean, you know, I, I'm not a, I, you know, no, I don't, I haven't seen anything to say that uh, Lula was imprisoned uh, uh, for political reasons. Uh, in fact, he was let out on a technicality. He is, you know, and by the way, Lula does not like the United States. Uh, he is not America friendly. Um, um, well, I, could you speak uh, uh, to um, U.S. Um, uh, drug policy and how that is affecting the violence in the region? Obviously, I would like to see uh, everyone would like to see an end to the violence. Um, a, a crackdown on that is, you know, is more but is more warfare with the cartels really, you know, getting there, further driving the product underground and creating this endless cycle. You know, I, 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 if I understand your question correctly, I disagree with the premise. The president of Mexico, and don't forget, the Mexican cartels are behind uh, the, the Ecuadorian cartels. The Mexican cartels are the really big ones. Uh, they, are, they control swaths of Mexico. The president of Mexico, uh, Andres Lopez Obrador, has not pursued a war against them. He, he has a policy of, of abrazos, no barazos and it hugs, not bu bullets, that has not turned out well. And of course, we have an open border with Mexico. Uh, we have, uh, nobody knows really, but an estimated between 8 million and 10 million people who have come across the border, which is really just open uh, over the last three years. Uh, it is estimated that a lot of the fentanyl that, that is being used in our streets and killing our people come through this open border. I, I myself have been on the border. I have been told by people, this is where the, 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 the gangs bring, the, bring the, the, the fentanyl across the Rio Grande. I haven't seen the gangs, but I've been told this is the place, one of the places where they do it. So, you know, it's not just that we have a demand in this country that we haven't really done much about. It's that we facilitate, by having an open border, the entry of these drugs. Mm. Mr. Gonzalez, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate it. Thank you very much.